Hi friends, Mrs. McBride here, coming to you straight from room 219. And what we're talking about today is a little bit of momentum and impulse. So let's start talking first about linear momentum. Now I say linear because later in the year we're gonna learn about something called angular momentum, which is the basically um, the same thing as linear momentum, but only when rotating. Okay, so what linear momentum is, I like to say that linear momentum is mass in motion. If you have mass and you're in motion, then you have momentum, okay? Uh, momentum, if you can think about like some using some sports analogies, it means you're hard to stop, right? You've got the momentum, all right? We've got the momentum going into the last two minutes of the game, okay? Hopefully we'll win, things like that. Do you remember what the symbol for momentum was? Hopefully you said lowercase p, which you're right. And also momentum is a vector, meaning that we get to do all of our fun vector things with momentum. It has units of kilograms times meter per second, or we could also say Newton seconds. I like to use kilograms times meters per second um, because normally we're taking um, mass and multiplying by velocity, and those are the units of mass and velocity, but you could really do um, sort of either one. Okay, so last year we would have said that momentum is equal to mass times velocity, and this year we'll just add that momentum is a vector and velocity is a vector, so we'll put the little vector symbol over the top. I want to do a quick aside for you here, and this is not going to be the first time that we're going to go down this road, okay? So you don't necessarily have to write this down, but I want you to know where this comes from, okay? So we know that F equals MA. I'm going to tell you this. You would say, well, this is Newton's second law, but this actually isn't how Newton wrote this law. This is the derivation of how Newton wrote his law. So what Newton really wrote was this. He really said, well, acceleration is really the change in velocity over the change in time. So if we say, well, really, this is mass times velocity over time. Right? Well, we just said that mass times velocity was momentum, right? So Newton would really say that the force is equal to the momentum over time, right? Lowercase p, momentum over time. Or Newton, because he was also the inventor of calculus, said, well, it wouldn't just be the force, excuse me, the momentum over time. It would be the change in momentum over the change in time or the derivative of the momentum with respect to time, okay? So what Newton really wrote in terms of the force, right, is he really wrote that force is equal to the derivative of the momentum with respect to time. Okay, and again, what this really is, is this is really F equals MA in disguise, okay? Or this would be how Newton would have written it, okay? So we can write out two different things. The momentum is equal to mass times velocity, but force is also equal to the derivative of the momentum with respect to time, okay? All right, any questions about any of that? Hopefully not. We can also say that momentum is equal to mass times the change in velocity. If we wanted to throw that guy in there as well. Or P equals MAV. Do you remember doing MAV last year? The next topic is impulse. I think impulse is a really hard thing to describe. So if we think about a collision where we really see a change in impulse, Okay, we really think that there's something that's uh, two things that are colliding or a force that's being applied over time. So think about a baseball colliding with a baseball bat, right? So they're in contact with a certain amount of time and a force is being applied to that ball by the bat over time. Or if you wanted to give a good definition of impulse, you would say that this was a measure of the strength and duration of a collision. Okay. 
Um, and just by reading this, hopefully you're saying, well, I remember what the equation for impulse is, okay? That the strength of a collision, hopefully you're saying that really applies to force, and the duration of the collision, that really applies to time. Or we would say that the impulse is equal to force times time. But before we do that, let's go and say, all right, well, what is the symbol for impulse? Do you remember from last year? This one's a tough one. It's capital J, not to be confused with joules, which are also capital J. Impulse is also a vector, and it also has units of kilogram times meter per second or Newton seconds. Okay, and we can say that there's a couple of different equations for this guy. So to keep them sort of in the same order as we have here, we'll do what we know with a little with some vectors. We'll do a little bit of fancy calculus and we'll do what we learned last year. Okay, so keeping the same order, here we go. So we can say that impulse, which is a vector, is equal to force, which is a vector, times time. We can also say that impulse is equal to the integral of force with respect to time. And last year we would have said that impulse is equal to fat. Okay, but in each case we have force and time in some sort of um, order. Now, since we're using the idea of um, an integral, you know that in physics, for us, the integral is telling us that we're looking at the what part of a graph. Hopefully at home you're saying, well, that means that we must be looking at the area under the curve if we're talking about an integral. So a lot of times, and what a real crash looks like is sort of this like haystack shape here. Okay, and we might say that the area under the curve here is equal to the impulse. If you're gonna get a physics question on this, you'll get something much nicer, okay, because they'll give you the average force as respect to time. Okay, and you might get something that looks like this, and you would say, again, here, the impulse is equal to the area under the curve, okay? But either way, if you have a graph of force versus time, the impulse is the area under the curve. And this is something that you're gonna see a lot in AP Physics C. Like, they really like this idea that if we have a graph of force versus time, they really like the idea of finding the area under the curve. You'll see the lot, this a lot, in, uh, especially when we do our green book problems. Okay, hopefully you don't have any questions on any of that. Just a little bit more here, flipping the page for me. So I said we were gonna come back to F equals MA, right? and the idea that the acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. So if we plug this in here, we say that force is equal to mass times the change in velocity over the change in time. And if I multiply this over here, I get that force times the change in time is equal to mass times the change in velocity. And if I go back and look at my notes from earlier, if we're thinking about, well, what is fat? Okay, we can find that fat is equal to our impulse. And MAV is equal to our momentum. Or we can basically say that this is proof that this is the impulse equals momentum. Okay, or we can say that according to the impulse momentum theorem, impulse equals momentum. So you know how we had the snowflake before? This is the uh, impulse momentum. This is like the snowflake's little brother. It's just an X. Or basically we're saying that all of these things equal all of these other things. Or impulse equals the change in momentum. Oops, sorry. Add in a little delta there. Okay. Which equals fat, which equals MAV. 
Now I want to do one more practice problem with you and um, then I'm gonna send you off to do some impulse momentum practice on your Google form. Okay? So for example, let's say we have a baseball is coming in and approaching a baseball bat and I'm gonna tell you that the baseball has a mass of 0.149 kilograms, which is the actual mass of a baseball. Okay, so the baseball is coming in at a speed of 40.2 meters per second. Oh God, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try to, this was just for your entertainment. That looks like a corn dog, but pretend this is a baseball bat, okay? <laughs> oh, I, should, I, I knew I shouldn't have drawn it. Okay, and now the baseball comes back out and apparently it's gotten slightly larger because I can't draw worth beans. And it comes back out with a velocity of 45.6 meters per second. Okay, and I'm gonna also say that these things were in contact for 1.1 times 10 to the negative three seconds. So, All right, so what information do we have here? What do we, what do we need to know? What are we looking for? Well, first of all, I wanna know how much force is being applied to the baseball bat. So we can use the idea of our impulse momentum X. What do we have? What are we looking for? Well, we can start out that we definitely need to use this side because if we're looking for the force, this is the only thing that has force in there. So we can use the idea that fat is equal to Hopefully you're saying MAV, or mass times the change in velocity. All right, so let's start plugging in some of this information here. So we're looking for the force. We know that the time is 1.1 times 10 to negative three. We know that the mass is 0.149 kilograms. And now we've gotten to the change in velocity. Well, the change in velocity, this part is the weird part, is it would appear that you could just take these two and subtract them. But the problem is, is that this is going in one direction and this is going in the other direction. So when we go to do the change in velocity, since we've got things moving in different directions, we should have different signs, right? So if I say that this one is negative, when I do the change in velocity or when I do my final minus initial, I really have 45.6 minus a negative 40.2. But since I have minus a negative, this is really adding these two together. And I find that since these are moving in opposite directions, my change in velocity is not subtracting, but is actually adding those two. So if I really have 45.6 plus 40.2, I find that my change in velocity is actually 85.8. And that's something common that you're gonna see, is that really the change in velocity is never zero when you have a collision. And I'm gonna write that down in just a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this problem. And then just note that a lot of times when we're working with the change in velocity, you can never assume that it's zero. Okay, there is, if there is a collision, there is a change in velocity, therefore there is a momentum. So nothing should ever be zero in here. All right, so if I take and I multiply this by 0.149, and I'm gonna divide by 1.1 e to the negative three, I'm gonna get that the force is equal to 11,622 Newtons. And again, just as a reminder, if there is a collision, like in our case here, a collision between a bat and a ball, there is a change in momentum and an impulse applied. Okay, so never think that you've got an idea of zero, okay? All right, good luck, friends.